Hello, and welcome to my first review for VTTV. So, my first review, that is going to be then, the Smock BEC Pro. So, without any more mecking about, and caution, there might be squeaky chairs involved, let's go down to the close-ups, and then after the close-ups, we'll come back here. See you in a moment. Okay, so here we have the uh, Smock BEC Pro, currently living in its box as it arrived. Um, do excuse the creaky chair. There's not much I can do about this, I'm afraid. Wish I wish I could. Anyway, let's remove the uh, top of the box. And inside we'll see the BEC Pro itself. And you'll notice an additional top cap. Um, let's just go ahead and remove that. And the top cap. And the little foam filler. And you'll also see a cardboard insert with a user's manual. Very brief user's manual, but a user's manual. And it will cover your basics like the dimensions, uh, some diagrams there, how to insert a battery, how to use the menu system, and uh, sorry, and uh, quite crucially, it will fire an atomizer right down to 0 0.3 ohms, which is quite good news for you sub ohms out there who want a regulated device. That's a tube mod, not a box mod. Anyway, so let's have a look at the BEC Pro, shall we? You'll notice it's actually, well, you won't notice because I'm taking it apart. However, it does come apart in four pieces. So here we have the, uh, the bottom cap, which is uh, spring-loaded. It's very, very firm, but it is spring-loaded. There are four vent holes, sorry, three vent holes. I can't count today. Ah. Who'd have thunk it? Right. On the inside, there's four vent holes. You see that? On the outside, there's three. The one in the middle isn't really a vent hole. I'm entirely sure what's going on there. Hang on. I can blow through it quite happily. So, uh, yeah, it will definitely vent in the, uh, in the event of a uh, battery failure. So the next part now is the, uh, the main body, which will come apart from the control head and uh, you'll notice there's uh, quite a distance there between the uh, screw threads uh, anyway uh, so this is the main tube and uh, it's got a nice some people are not going to like this some well as with all these things you know you what you think of it taste wise is subjective personally I quite like it it's got a nice texturing here um, which gives you a nice grip and you'll also notice as well that the top part of it is slightly tapered outwards so it gives it a sort of a, a curvature which again is quite nice so I'll just pop the uh, tube back on there I'm not going to put the bottom cab in because I need to install a battery at some point it's a single button interface let's try and get that face in the camera there we go. And it will say on there, it does, it's not going to will, it does say on there, BEC Pro. And as I said, single button interface. Here is the screen. You can't see it at the moment because it's the uh, frosted black uh, polycarbonate shield there. And um, a removable top cap. Let's try and keep things in focus. It's always helpful. Okay. You'll notice the Ego threading, as well as the 510 connection. Um, so that will mean you can use your EVODs and uh, CU4s and whatever else you've got to require an Ego thread. So it's good news, this gives it some versatility. Um, now, one thing I've noticed is the, uh, the 510 pin on here does not appear to be adjustable. You certainly cannot adjust it with uh, a screwdriver, uh, as there are no threads or indents to use a screwdriver and popping a screwdriver in there it doesn't appear to depress so be very careful with that um, now I'll just pop this to one side and it does come with two top caps now I did measure these top caps and uh, this one I measured at 22.25 millimeters in diameter and this one I measured at 21.97 I'm not going to say my measurement's entirely accurate because 
it's quite tricky to actually get the calipers right on the edge. They they are both tapered, you see. So uh, you've actually got to take the measurement right on the very edge. Uh, so it does make life a bit trickier. But both of them also come with these little cutouts here that allow airflow if you require airflow from a 510 connector, such as a cartomizer in a tank or uh, the scrape, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, the top cap, which does not allow me to use an ego device. And you can see it won't allow me because there's nowhere for the actual skirt to thread down on. And you can see that the uh, the 510 itself, I'm trying to get some focus here, the 510 itself does sit flush with the top of the top cap. So that's good news. Um, most of the atomizers I've screwed down to it do fit flush, uh, with the exception of the aero tank. Um, it will not screw down because the aero tank does not have an adjustable 510 connector. It's ever so slightly, t I don't want to crank it down too much because that's, that's bad form. Ever so slightly uh, sits proud. And also you will notice as well that uh, it doesn't sit straight giving it a sort of a banana look but um, your mileage may vary I mean it works fine with it no problems there so uh, anyway I'm failing at covering up this part of it so I'll just show you this is the uh, the BEC Pro's party piece it's got Bluetooth connectivity which allows you to change a lot of the options via your phone which is quite fun and just underneath there as well, you see it says smock. Uh, in nice deep engraving, actually, as it happens. And to comment on the build quality of it, I've got no real issues with it. It doesn't feel flimsy. Um, now, I've had an EVIC, the original EVIC. I, haven't, I, I don't have an EVIC Supreme. And one of the problems I had with the EVIC was that the uh, the top cap here would come away from the, uh, the plastic body. But time will tell on that one. Anyway, let's install a battery. Um, as I install it, you'll see it light up saying smock. There we go. And then it goes off. Uh, the threading on this isn't the best threading in the world, but by no means the worst. It's it's perfectly fine. Um, anyway, let's stick an Aspire Nautilus on here. Which does sit nice and flush because the Nautilus, as we know, has an adjustable 510 or a spring-loaded 510 connection. So, uh, anyway, five clicks to turn it on. There we are. Smock, welcome. Let's move it away a little bit. If I press it another five times, I can scroll through the settings. So let's go to number one. Number one is Bluetooth. Uh, number two is W plus and W minus there. I for information, five for settings, six for lock, seven for power. So let's have a look in the settings. So five, just leave it there and it will go in. So watts mode, mech mode, volts mode, watts mode, mech mode. So that's the wee settings you can have. So I'm going to leave it in watts mode for the moment. And then another five clicks. And I can adjust the wattage of my device. That's in point 0.1 increments. Now this will go up to 50 watts. Obviously, that's going to depend on the uh, abilities of your battery. You need a nice high drain battery, like, for example, a Sony VTC5. Well, I'm going to set this to 17.5 watts. And it fires, and it shows there 17.5 watts output. And these, it's, hard, it's hard to keep this in because the, uh, the display doesn't stay for too long. But you can see there the B symbol and off underneath it. That tells me the Bluetooth is off. Now, if I go back into the menu again... information so currently output I can have battery so if I change that to battery and I fire it it shows me I've got four volts left in my battery information again ohm and that shows me 1.7 ohms temp that shows me I'm at 91, 93 degrees Fahrenheit. That can't be measuring the actual uh, coil. There's no way. So it's got to be measuring the temperature of the device. And what else have we got? Output. We've been through there, haven't we? And battery and ohm. So let's leave it on output. Now, obviously, you can see the wattage 
plus and minus there. Now that would change if I had it in voltage mode, that would change to a V as opposed to a W. But another interesting feature in the settings is mech mode. And when I fire that, it will give me the actual the actual straight power from the battery. So we know I've got about four volt uh, four volts of uh, power coming out of the battery at the moment, um, or four volts of charge, or well, whatever it said there. Let's have a look. Um, information output battery ohms. So output. It's in mech mode. And you can see there it's firing at 7.8 uh, watts. So that is what the power in the battery, in the battery alone, not being boosted by the device, is actually outputting. So that's quite a handy feature. Um, that, will, that will mean that I can just use a straight battery power and I can see what that straight battery power would equate to on the, uh, on the, the resistance of the coil. So it's quite handy for uh, folk out there to perhaps... Uh, build a coil, pop it on a device, put it into mech mode and see, without using an ohm's law calculator, what the wattage would be. Um, personally, I can't ever see myself using that feature because I've got actual mechanical devices, so... Yeah, I'm going to leave it in the variable, voltage, uh, variable wattage mode. There we go. Now if I fire that now, and you can see it's remembered that I had it set to 17.5, so that's quite nice. Actually, once we're here, let's test if it remembers after a battery removal. Okay, so uh, turn it back on. Firing. Yes, it does remember the setting. Hmm. And vape's lovely. Okay, then. So let's uh, let's go back to my uh, my ugly mug and. Uh, we will show you some other features, specifically the Bluetooth feature. Welcome back. Right then, so now we've had a look at the uh, device up close, let's uh, have a look at the Bluetooth software, shall we? So, here it is. Right, let's have a vape and you'll see what happens. You see there, um, I've had 41 puffs, apparently. Um, I've vaped at 15.24 watts, I've got a uh, 1.8 ohm atomizer on top of the device and in order to achieve that 15.24 watts um, the device is actually outputted 5.23 volts. Right, so what we can do then, let's go into the settings. You can do all fancy things like uh, you can rename the device, you can set the password, but I'm not going to cover that here. Um, we can put this to mechanical mode, uh, much like I did in the close-ups. So now in mechanical mode, I'm just going to use the power that's in the battery. It's not going to boost it in any way. So that is outputting... 3.86 volts there and I'm getting 8.27 watts let's go back to the settings again and we put it on variable voltage mode and I'm going to leave that at 4.2 volts And there we go, it's come up as a 4.14 volts and 9.52 watts. And if we go back furthermore, we can do a custom power mode. Now you've seen this before on the uh, on the EVIC and the EVIC Supreme, and the forthcoming Preveri P3 will do similar. But what I like about this is I can just program it on the phone. So what you can see there is I've set one up now for two seconds is going to fire at 17.5 watts and then for two seconds after that, uh, sorry, 10 seconds after that is going to fire at 15.0 watts. Um, and I've got another profile here. Let's see it display. Right. So for three seconds it's going to fire at 20 watts and 10 seconds after that it's going to fire at 15. That will allow me to preheat my coil as such. So if I just save and enable that, 
There we go. Now let's go back to the display. When I fire it and vape, just watch and see what happens. For three seconds, you should see it higher than drop down. And there you can see it dropped from roughly 20 watts down to roughly 15. Now, this is the thing I've noticed with this, is that the settings you put in aren't entirely what you get out. I think, if I'm honest, it's down to the battery I'm using. Um, I have done some more testing with this, and I'm trying to keep it short because this is going to be a long review otherwise. Um, you do get error messages appear on the device and on the uh, on the application. And it will tell you if your battery doesn't have enough power to... If I put this to 50 watts now, in fact, I'll do that. If I put this to 50 watts, so uh, variable power mode, 50 watts, okay. Okay, it's taking it to 24. So that's as far as the battery is going to go. I have seen it happen where the battery didn't have enough power in it. And it just said battery voltage too short. Which means the battery doesn't have enough power to really give it anything. So that's a nice feature. It won't let you fire above what you can do with the battery. So I'll just set that back down to 15 again. Um, now really in order to use this device to its fullest. You need to have an Android or an iPhone. Um... Or an Android tablet or an iPad. Um, the application will work on Android 4.3 and up. I believe the current, most current version is 4.4. I could be wrong. I never keep up with these. And it will work with iOS 6 and higher. I've not tested it with an iPhone because I don't have one. Well, that's a lie. I do, but it's a very old one and I don't use it. Um, so there we go. Let's take away the, uh, the Bluetooth now or the, the app. We'll have a little vape. And we'll talk about the cost. The uh, the cost is focus. The, the, that's better. The, the cost is uh, around about £80. I've seen it for £75 and I've seen it for £79.99. Um, it's available for many vendors. Uh, if you go to... If you do a, a Google search for Smock Tech BEC Pro... And the country you live in, chances are you're going to find a vendor that will supply it to you. Um, I did purchase this myself. And am I happy I purchased it? Yes, I am. Uh, I, I've got a fair few variable uh, voltage, variable wattage devices. I've got two Samovars. I've, 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 got, um, I've got an EVIC. I've got other stuff. I've got a ZMAX. Uh, that sort of thing. And I believe this to be a good addition. Um... A few niggles. I don't like the fact it hasn't got an adjustable 510, but if you're using an adjustable 510 on an atomizer, that's not such an issue. Um, I do like the fact it comes with two top caps, so you've got the choice of using it with an Ego uh, skirt device or without. That's a nice addition. And the build quality is pretty good. So, that's my views on the, uh, the Smock BEC Pro. Until my next review... Cheers.